And welcome back to Neon Fastique on this week's episode, an enigmatic ensemble of collectible vintage UFO literature from the atomic age of the 1950s. First coined Flying Saucers in 1947 by Kenneth Arnold after his sighting and numerous reports of alleged downed alien saucers, the UFO phenomenon has captured the imagination of millions. From comic books, movies, plays and countless novels, all culminating towards the big question, are we alone? So now let's take a brief step back in time when the UFO phenomenon was in its infancy and why some of these books today are highly prized by collectors. Now as we go through these you will notice that the condition leaves a lot to be desired and I did pick most of these books up from second hand booksellers in the late 1980s and to be fair it wasn't a popular subject matter and in most cases for all intents and purposes was shunned. It wasn't until hit TV shows like The X-Files in the early 1990s did people begin to take an active interest in the subject. So before we start, a quick word on condition and what to look for. For the most part, the process of assessing the grade of a book or novel is not too dissimilar to that of comic book grading. That said, there are a few other guidelines to adhere to before a grade can be allocated, such as, has the item been rebacked, re-sewn or glued? Is the dust jacket original and if so, does it display any repairs? Does the item present damage from worming or wormholes? And is the addition a first, second or third impression? And finally, is the item an ex-library copy? In short, when making a purchase regarding a book or novel, a more detailed analysis is required and although that may sound quite daunting, the majority of observations are purely down to common sense with the slack being eventually called by the grading authorities once the item has been submitted. So, now we have a better understanding of how that works, let's take a look at some of my editions from my personal collection. So for ease, we'll start by the year first. So the year is 1950, with Behind the Flying Saucers and Where Do They Come From by author Frank Scully. So on my left, we have the hardback edition that was released for the market here in the United Kingdom. And we have the reprinted edition that was released in 1951, but in paperback format for the market in the United States. Now, the author Frank Scully was very prolific concerning the UFO phenomenon and also contributed to the magazine Flying Source Review, which is still in print today. Now, as you can see from these examples, the condition has somewhat deteriorated, but most of these books, not all, do come complete with original photographs and illustrations. But anyway, let's move on and have a look at the next two. Following closely, printed in 1953, we have Flying Saucers from Outer Space and two both printed in 1954. But interest of note, Flying Saucers from Outer Space was written by Major Donald Keyhole, who was employed by the United States Air Force for Project Blue Book and investigated on their behalf all sightings and alleged crashes and retrievals. However, originally hired to debunk such events and witnesses, ended up as a believer. Interesting that, isn't it? Now, most of these novels cover events, stories around or leading up to publication, but there is a rogue publication in Flying Saucers from Mars, originally written by Cedric Allingham, which decades later was revealed to be a hoax and actually penned by the famous astronomer, I think it's a sir, Sir Patrick Muir, which adds fuel to the notion that the reader must view all information as fictional until all information can be substantiated. Next we have Flying Saucers from the Moon, printed in 1954, The Case for the UFO, printed in 1955, and again in 1956, Report on Unidentified Flying Objects. So Flying Saucers from the Moon is a first print edition, and amongst many covers the Foo Fighters incident, but the main star of this lineup is The Case for the UFO, written by Maurice K. Jessup. Now this book has become infamous, highly sought after by collectors, and has soared in value over the last decade mainly due to its link to the infamous Philadelphia experiment, which is referenced in this book. Now, that is a whole story on its own, but uh, one that I may get to later on. Anyway, the report on unidentified flying objects was written by Edward J. Ruppelt, who headed Project Blue Book from 1951 to 1953, and it is a really interesting read. But anyway, let's move on. So again, printed in 1957, we have the Flying Saucer Conspiracy. And then again, in 1958, they knew too much about Flying Saucers. And lastly, in 1960, Flying Saucers Top Secret. Now, as you can see, 
certain authors names keep cropping back up don't they but these are really good novels if you just have an avid interest in the subject matter but they knew too much about flying saucers does get a little creepy halfway through and interest of note the black satellite that people are aware of at the moment that seems to be orbiting our planet and certain people have come forward and said it's space debris or it's something left over from one of our shuttle missions well that very satellite is reported in this book from 1958 astronomers had picked it up then so uh, make your own opinions about that but anyway moving on to the last so here we find ourselves at the end for now but this particular edition is quite a fitting one i think you may agree published in 1960 flying saucers in the united states air force was purposely published by the air force in an attempt to debunk everything that came before it a rather cheeky underhand blatant dismissal but, again, a must-read for equal observations of the subject, and has become a difficult book to find these days, usually commanding a high price on the secondary market. Anyway, something a little different this week, but I hope you've found it interesting. But as always, thank you for your time. Thank you to all our subscribers. Take care of yourselves, and remember, the truth is out there. Cheers. <laughs> Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs>